the Lillehammer 1994 Winter Olympics. The best winter games ever. This, one of our proudest moments, gave us not only unforgettable memories, we also inherited arenas on which dreams are built and the knowledge and skills to turn those same dreams into reality. Since 94, our Olympic region has hosted 50 European and World Championship events. We have arranged more than 200 World Cup competitions and have established the standard for all future Youth Olympics after the 2016 Games. This amazing multiplicity of events has provided us with a wealth of unique knowledge and skills, which we willingly and with great pleasure share with others. The best race is still to come. The perfect competition lies ahead of us. The ultimate match has not yet been played. The road toward fastest, highest, or strongest is never ending. Those who have come closest to perfection have shown indomitable willpower and courage. But more importantly, they have not traveled the road alone. Lilyhammer Olympic Legacy Sports Center has been, and always will be, a tireless traveling companion on the pathway that leads to dreams being achieved, both for tomorrow's champions and those who shall lead them on the journey towards the stars. That's why our motto says, train better, lead better, and share it with the world. Great, so I also want to say a welcome from uh, the paranautic skiing side, um, and I want to thank everybody um, from the Lillehammer Olympic Legacy Sports Center, and uh, so Ida representing, um, and Jens from the Norwegian Bartlon Association, and Anna Rangel uh, from the Norwegian Ski Federation, who's not able to join us today, um, but it has been a, a great journey um, so far, but unfortunately we had to yeah, postpone some activities that we have planned for this month in Lillehammer, the physical development camp. But I'm happy that we could uh, put together an online camp with the great uh, presenters So that will come today. So I hope you will enjoy and um, yeah, wish that you all take out the most of it. And would like to give the word to, to Jens next. Thank you very much, Selke, and also to you, Ida. Um, we are, um, my name is Jan Scherben, and I represent the Norwegian Biathlon Association. And uh, some of my work is to develop uh, the recruitment and, uh, uh, in uh, para sports. And um, um, so from our side, we want to welcome all of you from all over the uh, the world uh, to this session. Uh, we have brought to hopefully motivate and inspire you um, uh, with uh, our Paralympic athlete Nils Erik uh, Ulset and his coach Anders Øverby, uh, who would like to talk about the relationship they have, how they train and how to motivate, how to develop skills, how to perform in biathlon and, and uh, really give an inside view of how they are working together to, to reach Nils Erik goals for, for the upcoming season with the World Championships in Lillehammer and also the Paralympic in Beijing. So from our side, I give the words to Anders and uh, Nils Erik and uh, hopefully you all find this really interesting. Thank you very much, Jens. It's a pleasure to talk to all of you. And um, hopefully we can inspire some of the listeners to this upcoming season and for future years. So I'll start sharing a screen, my screen here. But uh, first of all, um, I'm Anders Øverby. Uh, I'm the coach of uh, Nils Erik. Do everybody see the presentation? 
Um, this is my first year as a coach for Nils Erik and uh, also my first year as a coach for a para-athlete. Um, I have worked in biathlon for six, seven years as a coach. So it was a great opportunity and uh, to start coaching Nils Erik. And uh, so far, I'm not disappointed. Just all good and uh, um, a, a great guy and a great sport. So um, you can say maybe say a few words, Nils Erik, for those that uh, doesn't know you. Uh, yeah, uh, like I said, my name is Nils Erik. I'm being an athlete now for this is my 20th season in the Paranordic skiing, actually. So it's uh, it's been quite a few, um, but also my last. So it's time to time to find something new stuff to do. Uh, like Anders said, this is our first year working together. Uh, it was, uh, even though he is, like he says, the first year working with the para-athlete is what my f- first thought when he got the job was that this guy is overqualified. So it's, um, yeah, it was a good start from there and uh, it's been, it's been really, uh, and I think I may have learned more than him so far. So that's a good thing for me, uh, even though I'm probably 10 years older than you. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a good work. Uh, uh, yeah, good working with him. So it's, uh, it's going to be fun to start the season now next week in, in Calmore and see, see how it's going to end up in racing. Absolutely. So um, we will try to take you in uh, to our um, every day as a coach and then as an athlete. So we'll start a little bit about, it's a special thing that this year, as Nils Erik and I said earlier, that um, it's our first year working together. And uh, we have some things that we think are maybe uh, not crucial, but important to have in the relationship between a coach and an athlete to make this relationship work and also have fun on the way and uh, develop the skills you want to uh, want to be good at. So um, maybe Nils Erik, you will start. Uh, here you see three pictures of uh, our training season so far. What do you think is the um, uh, most important thing when you're working two persons together to reach a goal? I would say, uh, well, first of all, I have to say, even though it's our first year working together, we we known each other for a couple of years. So, so it's we. I think before starting uh, the uh, the first camp we had in May uh, with our strategy and thoughts and what we were supposed to develop in this season, Anders already had some uh, some thoughts and some ideas, uh, and we just started spinning around that and. And working with it, as, and and we we early this start to look uh, to to Beijing and what were we had to expect coming down there, and and from that we we kind of yeah, made a plan uh, for a three month strategy from there, and it I think we took early we took really big steps and. Uh, and like Anders said, we we uh, yeah we we do a lot of serious and good work together. We also are really good at having a lot of fun together. So it's uh, we we're trying to we have found a really good balance between that. And even though, like you see in the the picture and the the far left under seeing behind me, I don't know how many how many hours he's been spent behind me skiing and running and yeah on the range this year, but. Uh, we're still not sick of each other. That's pretty, I'm pretty impressed with that because you might see that um, Gina's advantage since we're uh, we're a team with one athlete and one coach and one waxer, but that it's easy to to have enough of each other. But actually, we've been really lucky with that and every day we've been developing really good from that. So it's uh, for me, I think it's just a huge advantage. And as a coach, uh, uh, from a coach view, I think that uh, one of the things that um, the relationship between an athlete and a coach 
uh, is uh, a major a uh, very important thing is to communicate together together uh, and not just only it's it's a big difference to talk to each other and talk to each other if you know uh, to actually talk the same case and understand what the other person is meaning um, when I came from um, uh, the, um, one of the things I've learned this year is it's so important for me to hear what Nick Derek says and also hear what uh, his feelings is about uh, what he's performing and also his feelings about general in life. So I think that uh, to communicate is a very um, um, big thing that you often forget, forget in the everyday life. Uh, because you take things for granted, granted that you think uh, you think you understand, but there's always a meaning behind. And uh, I think that from the start of May, uh, one of the very good things that we have uh, done together is that we started to communicate and establish a good culture together. But c- communication is the first step of a good culture. Yeah, definitely. And it's, that's that's one of the things that made made it so easy when when Anders, because uh, I had coaches earlier, they send me a plan and okay, this is what you're gonna do. But uh, that when when me and Anders sit together and and start planning, which I know that he understands. Uh, one thing is the, the volume of training I've done the last period, but you also know the volume of work. Uh, I I have a kid who, yeah, it, it's it's a lot of fun, but also it takes it takes some energy, and sometimes you don't sleep as much as you want. And just having others understand this during the planning, it's it's been working out really well and uh, made a made a huge difference for me this year. And and like you said, being able to cook. Uh, to communicate that early from from the beginning of our working together it's been uh, really important and I think it's that's one of the reasons why we've come so far as we've done now coming into the season. Uh, from an athlete's view Nils Erik what do you think is uh, what is important that uh, from to get this com- communication? Uh, honestly trust uh it's and uh, and i think what we what we uh, established early was that uh then the common under, uh, understanding of each other's situation that actually we you can uh i can say that i i, I training wise i feel really good but there's a lot of other stuff that i that's kind of building up now that I can't do what I want to do and then communicating with that to back to you and that you actually yeah understand it and we adjust uh, the training load so that okay that maybe not this week we can do exactly what we want but in three weeks time we will uh, we will be where we want to be anyway so it's it's not a problem so uh having that trust that I know that I can say to you how I feel now, be honest about that and that you actually respect that. That's been really, really important. That works out fine, not just only when you're tired, but also when you're uh, fresh. So we can train um, sometimes even harder than planned because you're taking steps. I think you said uh, a very important thing there about uh, starting to understand each other and um, one of the um, steps in our season the first step actually was to establish some values uh, is there something you can tell us about that Nintendo, how you felt uh, that situation I, I've been or, on I've uh, like I said this is my 20th year so it's been I've been in some teams throughout through uh, through the years, and uh, and I've been on on a team alone also for some seasons. But this is the first time I actually sat down and and made those 
uh, team rules that actually feel like okay this is this is worth something this is actually this makes sense and this is something that we want to work after it's not just something that you put on a paper to the, because it looks nice and when well, and, uh, and if uh, our our bosses in the federation ask do you have the do you have the team rules this is this is actually something we want to live after and that's something we want to yeah we want to build use as a foundation for a team and it's uh, so it's uh, i think we started out pretty good already there mm -hmm. We can uh, maybe take some of our values and tell people how we, what we uh, put in those values, and what, um, in which way we it turned out to be exactly the, those values. Uh, it's it's Norwegian words, so it's maybe something that means uh, more to us in Norwegian. But I'll take the first one: natural prog progress. I call it. What do you think about uh, what what is our deal about progressing naturally in Ilsedek? It's not stressing. Just uh, we have a, a long time view of, of the process we're in, and it's uh, uh, it's. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Vincent Dush is here right now, so I don't want to talk too much because he's a French coach. He's the coach of the, my, my biggest rival. So it's uh, Vince. Can you just just go wait for coffee for five minutes? That would be good. I know <laughs> uh, it's just uh, we've been working in and uh, uh, this is some what we're going to be working on the next period of time for 90 days and it's, that, that's how long we know it takes to build in to, to learn this uh this cycle that we're in now and not stressing for every time we have to use uh uh, uh or learn something new. and it's for me that's been especially now getting on snow uh because i've been feeling that on roller skis and through the summer training yeah. Uh, things have been really, really good. Now we came back on snow for two weeks ago, uh, and I felt not as great as I did on roller skis. So that is good to have just a little bit better than the last one. And think about that every time. You, have, you also use that natural progress uh, as a, as a, yeah. As a ground rule for every training, and just saying that you don't have to take big steps every time, just a little bit better every day is, is good enough because, in the end, that's going to be pretty good. That's very good, said And it leads us to maybe our next point that uh, we don't have to stress the progress, but do things properly. Also, be sure mm -hmm. you have established on this level before you before you aim for the next one yeah it's uh it's easy to to say that okay this uh remember the fir i think the first 90 days we were just working on how to breathe putting the elbows down in the intruding position uh that's pretty boring but <laughs> i know that it's not i i need 90 days to get that uh that i don't have to think about it, it just falls automatically when as i'm doing it and but also knowing that after when it were when i'm on day 90 on that if it's not good enough it doesn't mean that we can just okay just take the next step because now we're on day 90. it has to be it has to be good before we can do the next step we don't have to rush it and that's uh that's also what we've been doing on a lot of other training and not just doesn't training doesn't have to be doesn't start to the to uh, train a higher intensity now because that's what we said in May. So it's, um, I think, I think it's, uh, yeah, I, I've learned, like I said, I've learned a lot from that kind of process of working this year. And uh, final note, uh, at least uh, the, um, I, I, I didn't find a good word in English. To, to explain it, but in Norwegian it's called gofoten. And uh, what do you put, if you will put an English word on gofoten? Like what, what, how will you explain it? Uh, 
That's a good question. How, I, I don't have a real like easy good word for it, but we have our uh, for me uh, like just take breaking it down to skiing. For me, uphill skiing has always been uh, something I've been really good at uh, on on faster sections, flatter sections. Because of the balance, it's not been the best. So, of course, we've been working this season no, more on uh, on the flat sections and stuff like that. But we don't forget uh, the good the good part. What what I'm good at. So you 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 continue to build up under what your uh, what your strong side is. I think that actually the strong side would be the best word for it. And as you develop the other stuff, also you have to okay you be sure to to uh, keep the, the strong side strong uh, and just continue to to use that as a as an advantage so i guess uh, really it, it's a reason that i picked these three pictures because these three pictures is a kind of symbol of what we're working at uh, we have something in the in the right picture where Nils Erik is uh, standing in the gym in uh, trondheim with uh, Yvette training him in on his uh, weakest side, his uh, smallest muscles, and teaching him how to use his body in um, in uh, other way. On the middle picture, when in, we are in Saitraum, and that's maybe uh, do things properly. Also, you just take small step all the way to the top, and there the view is fantastic. But also, never forget. From a coach view, even though if uh, there's something I want to see Nils Erik do, play on his good side, play Nils Erik good, play the athlete good, and Nils Erik is at the, his best when he's um, competing, like in the left picture, when just uh, going full gas. So um, the reason that we want to talk a little bit about this. Let's go see. is because this is mainly how we have developed uh, our shooting strategy as well. Um, to take things in the natural progress and do things uh, properly and also play on the good side. Because uh, I think shooting is um, maybe one of the sports that's uh, a result of your habits. So when you see Nils Erik in this picture, uh, this is uh, on the um, first competition of the year on Shushan for uh, one and a half week ago. Uh, when you're competing in biathlon, you have uh, a very limited, um, um, what should I say? Um, your mind is limited. You can't think of everything. You are not that uh, present as uh, when you are in uh, low pools and um, not using your body. So you have to establish some habits that, um, I guess, um, just happens. You don't even have to think that it happens. Yeah, or you what can, you, think you kind of, it? yeah, you kind of you things you train on it, and so in a way that it's, you don't think about it, it's just almost it becomes an impulse. So you, mm. as I, as I, like I said, uh, we started in May training on breathing when the elbow hits the the, the shooting mat, and and from actually for me now it's it's a point where when the the right elbow, it's, which is the last one that touches the ground, from the second that one hits, it's just everything is basically impulse from there and until the yeah the last shot is done. So. And it was not like that in May, so it's uh, but it's been working just uh, in a uh, yeah progress uh, from there and until where we want to be now. And of course, we we also still uh, we're not not where we want to be yet, but we're getting closer. So it's uh, it's to. Like Anders said, and, and I'm not the brightest, the brightest part, person either, so I, I have a very limited uh, 
what I can think about and how much energy I can use about thinking. So for me, the more I can do an impulse, the better it is, and the more that it's just falls automatically. So it's, um, and that's why I think if you if you start thinking too much about shooting, you make shooting a lot harder than it has to be. I totally agree. <clears throat> and when you see this picture of Nils Erik shooting, this is uh, he's he's shooting with the uh, 22 caliber in this competition. So uh, we can maybe tell a little bit a little bit about uh, how we use 22 and an air rifle uh, about each other. But when mm -hmm. you see this picture, um, there's a lot of things you can improve. Uh, or maybe also uh, Nils and Erik always have things to, things to improve, but it's not always about what uh, you see and what you want to improve. It's also about what is um, what I have to speak to Nils Erik and calibrate uh, our way to um, what we want to improve. So uh, the way that we worked worked in shooting this year is that we share the process up in three. So we have an internal part that uh, I call it tech skills, that technical skills that you need to have on a so high level that you can't fail. But um, the mind is kind of limited, so we can't uh, have more than one thought each time. So like uh, you, like you said, Nils Erik, what was this elbow about these 90 days? Uh, I was focusing on when uh, how the breathing, uh, the elbow and the breathing uh, controls how the body relaxes as I'm uh, as I'm getting into the shooting position. Uh, as the the first like the left elbow is the first one that touches down, and also exhale and that releases tension and then and also as the second one comes down is just that's the final tension that goes pretty much goes out of the body and and as the second elbow hits the the mass it's just yeah to feel then the there shouldn't be tension in shoulders going into the the rifle and then it's just yeah pretty much looking at the target and and then it's just having more internal focus on on uh, what's supposed to do towards uh, the target. And what you can see on these pictures is uh, what Nils Erik is training, uh, what he's trying to improve. Uh, for an ordinary people, it would be like uh, Nils Erik is shooting, okay, it's, he is training shooting. But like you said, for an almost 90 days, you are just focus internal in your body and how you can relax in the shooting position. Because we know that when we are in winter, we need to be so relaxed as possible. Because shooting in a tense body means a big movement in the rifle. So to um, to to go against these these goals, to just not see the shooting as laying down and putting hitting targets, but also see the bigger picture. So. That is what I mean with the internal focus. And then after 90 days, yeah, you have something more to. Yeah, it was add. Uh, it was uh, strange. Uh, actually, thinking about how how far out in this the training we, as I, I'm talking months into training, we came before I actually knew if I was hitting or not, because Anders was just telling me, okay shouldn't paper you and never never telling me the results because all I was thinking I had to think about was elbows and breathing so I don't think uh, yeah it was uh, it was actually I think it was in May or something. no June, uh, June or July was the first time I actually knew what I was shooting it was just kind of strange because then like you, you normally want to my my the 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 way I normally work, work with shooting it, I would be saying, okay, now I try something new, and now I try it on metal just to see the result right away. But uh, it also, if I think if I if I decided, okay, 
uh, think about reading. And then after two sessions, I would start shooting on metal. If I would miss a couple of times, um, yeah, I would probably just forget about that technique and start some uh, something new. So it's uh, uh, it's been an interesting way of thinking of, uh, about learning something new. And and from a coach view, I think it's in, it's uh, extremely important to to give that lead some time to to establish those new habits instead of always just putting uh, the new new way of thinking in in the results. Uh, give the at least some time to feel on this task instead of just see the result of the task. And sometimes that can take 90 days. Sometimes it can take a week. You never know. But let that lead have the have the time to do to feel this feeling. And that is what I mean with the, the internal tech skills, the internal focus. The next step is to take it to the external or what's outside. Here we have two pictures, and I think that was. Uh, and summarize quite good of what we mean in this in this task. You're just shooting, and in the next picture, it's not uh, from the same uh, same place, but here you can see me showing you um, the 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 hits. What, how will will you describe this this uh, part of the model, Nilsedek? Uh. Well, I don't think if you mentioned, but uh, the, the picture on the left is from a, one of the intensity sessions we had in in altitude in Obertiliak, uh, where we push how close to the to the, the target we can come before we start thinking about the shooting, uh, which is really really interesting uh, to actually just. Trying to take out how <laughs> limit the the possibility I have to to start thinking about other other th stuff, and also it's on the the right is from from one of the trainings in Shushan, where uh, yeah basically coming to you after shooting and and just you showing me the results of what I actually also feel. When I'm when I'm shooting, because uh, the way we work also with with how to use uh, the vision and the sight in the together, uh, it just gives me a con coming to you after shooting gives me a confirmation of okay what we what we've been working on it's it's the right path and it's uh, we, we were supposed to be. So I guess. Um... Maybe I can use this pencil as an example because the first step, the internal focus, is me and Nils Erik just discussing what what uh, does a pen look like, and in the next step, we have the pen in front of us and we tell each other what we see. And uh, the fascinating thing with that is um, what we see uh, is um, a big difference. Also, it's different from people to people, so. Uh, what I, as a coach, think is the most important thing when you're coaching an athlete that's, that is shooting in a so complex sport as shooting is, is that I need to understand what Nils Erik sees through his sight and also uh, know what he's feeling inside his body. So, uh, on the left picture as well, um, uh, we did mention, but in the left picture, I'm standing on the right of Nils Erik and telling him every, every, where every hit is in the target. And that is a big change from the first 90 days where Nils Erik only had the focus inside his body and whew, relaxed. Now we're talking about what he sees and where the, the target is. The, sh the shot is, and that's and that way working also builds uh, uh, builds confidence for me because, like you say, using using the eye and see, uh, actually getting a 
a feedback that directly on how how I hit. Uh, also, like like it, it's a learning process for the brain that okay, if it looks like that, it, that's a good uh, that's a good shot, and just continue doing this, and uh, you know when, when you're doing right. And if I it's for good also a good confirmation if I had one shot that it's not that I'm not super happy with, then I under tells me right away okay that was uh, eight point nine o'clock, and I, I know exactly okay that's that's uh, the same thing as I saw. So it's, uh, and all, then you can start actually thinking about what, what are you doing wrong and what are you doing right. And that leads us to, to the next point, um, because um, to develop a good game strategy, that is, that is the next step. I think the major part is to, to measure the things you do and see, um, what what is the the competition? What does the competition demand of you? And put these things into the the session. And uh, when we're talking about feelings, it's not that easy to measure it. But when you're talking about external focus or uh, things that both uh, the athlete and the coach can see, I think it's very important to measure. So when you're talking about uh, me speaking the hit. You see the right uh, column there. And this is the uh, information that uh, in the evening after the session, me and Nils Eri can sit down and talk about what will we do next time. So I think it's very uh, important for coaches to measure, but also take take notes and see what see how the athlete responds on different kind of um, a different kind of uh, focus. And this is the major part that uh, this, the strategy that Nils Erik and I use this year is because I think that Nils Erik is very good at uh, expressing himself. So make it easy for me as coach to see his view, his view and put that in his training plans. So there's a red line of uh, communication from the start to where we are, are right now. Do you have something you want to add to that, Niltek, or is it fine? Uh, no, it's just it's uh, it's easy for me uh, as big, since like it's coming back to what we talked about uh, when we started in May, the com communication and everything like that, because uh, we now understand it are. Uh, that good when it comes to talking about training and uh, uh, evaluation after training sessions like this one, uh, where we talk about okay, what was good, what was what was bad. You can see some some of the the sessions were no, some of the uh, laps I had with higher pulls. I was also a little spreading the target, uh, the shots a little bit more around the targets. Okay, why? What's happening there? And and yeah, breaking just everything down to technique pulls uh, and seeing we know we also okay we we know where we want to want to be uh, time wise when it comes to shooting for first shot and and complete shooting. So it's it's uh, having data like this after uh, the important sessions. It's yeah, it's crucial and it gives us a really good. Uh, uh, place for developing the next uh, next steps. Just to summarize some of the some of what we have uh, talked about now, it's uh, first of all an internal focus, control your uh, control your body, and uh, as a coach, understand the athlete how the athlete's body works, and the next step is to put that together and. Uh, to what we both can see, to where in the target do we hit. Mm. I'll just uh, talk a little bit about, um, because we're talking about shooting. Uh, this year has been a very interesting year in the, in uh, more ways than just training, is Eric? Definitely. I think we, we, or I think you, 
have done a lot, uh, spent a lot of time. Uh, I think even you, I think you spent more time with my air rifle this year than I have. Uh, <laughs> and it, I think that's gonna ha- that's gonna help me when it comes to the races that are that are coming up now. So it's uh, and it's been really interesting to see the results of uh, what you've been doing. The pictures you see here is uh, the right picture is from the from spring May and the left picture is from October. Um, we're actually doing quite the same thing in both uh, both pictures, but in the right one we are testing ammunition for the the spring and summer. So we tested some ammunition in this. Here you can see um, this uh, this man is um, putting in shots and into the gun, and we're seeing the spread and the speed of the bullet. And um, in the summer part, we find some quite interesting things that um, we found um, several lots. Is that uh, correct, Sanis Eric? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, to see how big difference there is between actually the quite same shot or the same bullet. So uh, we found some interesting things there and took it to the October test. And you see the left box on the left picture, there's uh, that's a freezer. So it's uh, minus 12 degrees inside that box. So we tested uh, how um, how the bullets worked out in the air rifle in minus 12 degrees and minus 2 degrees. So, um, and do you think, um, uh, Nick, is there any things you thought that was, were interesting in this test? I was just testing. It was my first year of testing, so I had to learn. I know it's uh, of course also the 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 spread is all, of course always interesting when it comes to testing ammunition, but but we know that when you come to Beijing, there's going to be a, a lot of wind, uh, and having a faster bullet is not a disadvantage. So um, just knowing this, okay, looking for. For the fastest bullets on with the best precision, that's one thing that's been uh, yeah. It's I never thought in these ways before, and so it's it's good to, to have done that. And and then we know the of the frustration for every para athlete that know that we have to shoot the air rifle and instead of 22s is what happens when we when it gets colder than 10 10 degrees Celsius because then air rifles stop. To work as they should do. So having the possibility to to put the rifle in in the freezer and test the ammunition, seeing what happens and seeing if there's some ammunition that is not affected in this by this in the same way, and also also seeing how the precision is working when uh, when the the air pressure inside the cylinder gets low. It's been, uh, yeah, you found some interesting results. That's been, uh, I think it's going to be a helpful this winter. So so the main point here is that um, always measure the, um, what can I say, the changes you make and always try to do it better. And mm. that is the same thing, even if it's in the test room or even, or if it's outside training, always measure on the way what the changes mean to the result. So even if uh, Nils Eric was in an in, uh, internal focus, I as a coach, I always need to measure and see uh, as I, as I um, showed in the last picture here, that I have to see the difference on each time he is um, uh, doing changes. Yeah, that's and that's very really funny because I I'm uh, I'm used to working a lot on f- uh, just feeling uh, f- and how is how is this technique uh, the f- how does this feeling work on this kind of terrain? How does this booth work on this feeling? How does the ski feel work on this? 
coming back to Anders with those feedbacks and like, okay, this works better because I feel like this and this. And he just throws me like, yeah, but on paper it sucks. Then I just like, <laughs> put it away and okay. So it's, uh, it's, uh, I think uh, it's, for me, it's been uh, uh, kind of sharpening the focus on, okay, if I want to go this direction, I really have to, uh, it really has to be better unless it's just waste of energy. So it's, uh, so uh, yeah, that's been, uh, that's been a, a really good wake up call for me that you can do changes, but uh, you have to make sure that the changes are, are better than last than what it was. I think that's maybe a, a fine end to this, uh, this uh, session. Uh, I don't know what we can call this feature, also in, in Norwegian we call it Pumplen uh, Pilt. And I guess, I, I guess that's one of the, the, the main parts of to take from this session that uh, coach and athlete, we have uh, different kind of tasks, but uh, in the end, it's all about communicate and find find each other's best side. And um, what can I say? Uh, uh, yeah, make each other good. Like find yeah. make because uh, that's I think uh, uh, yeah a good way to say it is that. Uh, um, Anders is really, even when I hate training, Anders is really good at finding uh, finding the positive things about that training session. And I also learned that he needs that feedback the other way around sometimes. So it's uh, just make try to make each other as good as possible for every every training and every every time we work together. That's that's something we're both going to be benefiting from. Thank you very much, very guys. <laughs> um, we can open up for a little Q&A. So if uh, someone has a question, you can either raise your arm or you can write it in the in the chat. I actually got uh, a, two or three questions uh, uh, on my phone here for, for you. Um, it was really interesting about how you tested ammunition in the cold, and uh, you are talking about Beijing. Um, is there any, any other way you are preparing for windy Beijing other than uh, ammunition? How do you prepare, um, yeah, for the wind uh, in Beijing? I'm pretty I can living on the west coast of Norway so it's uh, we, we have wind pretty much every day so it's, for me it's going to be like training at home uh, and I think that uh, that maybe uh, it's, a, it's a quite funny question because uh, when we talk about Beijing we talk about it's a big uh, it's a big happening there's the wind there uh, it will be uh, difficult conditions but all these things are just uh, uh, kind of disturbing thoughts. It, the, the, the main thing when we are competing in Beijing is to shoot five or ten or twenty good shots and make a uh, good decision, even if um, if the wind is coming. So I think that uh, maybe that's the main part of what we are focusing focusing on this year is to to shoot a good shot and know what a good shot is. Oh, that's a really good answer, and uh, I think that will be helpful for many other athletes just to think about what to do and how to perform it instead of what you cannot um, have any effect on, like other <laughs> other stuff around. Um, also, just uh, there was a question, how does a usual training day now before the competition start, the usual training there, how does it look like, Nils Erik? Ah, it's, um, it's not really some, yeah, it's just not, not, not 
not different from anybody else. I just yeah, train in the morning. Uh, where we usually make us we make a plan for between session uh, between um, training camps and uh, try to build put it together in a way that it's uh, it's just not what, what we call it. We we don't want to make soup. We want to make uh like plates that actually go together so it's one training session has the development on the next one uh the next one and the next one and the next one so it was like in the big picture they all uh fall come together so it's so it's it, it depends on where in the season i am but now like before uh, coming into the race uh in Shushan, we were pretty much having it uh interval session every day the last two weeks so it was um but not 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 really hard so then it would just and of course having an interval in the morning session means you have to take it easy on the on the training in the afternoon so just putting it together like this and making sure that the good the sessions that are got that are hard uh, are good and uh the ones that are for meant for recovery or strength is just yeah they're just they're there to do that and make sure that you you train but you can you the feeling would be like if you're just laying on the couch that's what's uh, important you, you you gain energy not lose energy from it. perfect thank you um I got a question also from uh, Elke actually. How can new athletes join Para Baitlam? <laughs> that is probably different from country to country. Um, I don't know, Nils Erik, do you want to answer or should I say uh, I can. I can try and answer it. Uh, here in Norway, you just contact your local club and start training with them and see see uh, yeah build the offer together with them and and of course uh, depending on your injury or like uh, yeah well you, you might need some equipment for it and in every every sport region in Norway you have a, a contact that's working with parasports you can actually contact them and together with them go to the club and and make a plan and for both training and how how to uh, put together training sessions uh, for for the athlete what how who to contact to get the equipment that's needed and yeah start taking from there and also, that's what you do, the end. So, in, at some part point, you will come into the picture, I think. Yeah, that's what. Um, uh, that is actually my part in in uh, the Norwegian uh, Biathlon Association to to help uh, when um, new athletes contact the club. The con uh, the club will contact me as the federation and we will support them with the equipment and, and lend it out for free. Um, uh, so uh, that's how we try to develop in, in Norway at least. So thank you very much, guys. Um, Elke, can you see if someone has written in the chat or raised an arm if there are any questions? So at the moment, there's nothing in the chat and uh, no hand raised, but it was great. Thanks, uh, Nils, Eric and, and Anders for, for the very deep insights and how you work together and, and prepare for the upcoming season. So very, very much appreciated and thank good information for everybody who joined in today. So I would say this is the last chance for questions, um, if there are any. So feel free to raise your hand or type them in the chat. Either way works. I think uh, if there's no questions, 
coming up, then uh, I think it's a good time to to close here. And uh, thanks again to everyone who made this possible today. Tomorrow we have uh, another physical session, this time for the standing athletes at 4 p.m. CET, Central European time. And tomorrow evening, um, team there's team representatives from Russia and Great Britain uh, talking about the programs around talent identification and children development um, and how they build up the program and, and so on. So this will be also very, very interesting and I hope a lot of you join in tomorrow as well and we get some uh, extra participants on that. So with that, I will close for today and wish you all a good day, evening, morning, wherever you are around the world. And thank you very much. Great. See you. Thank you all for your time and uh, good luck, Anders and Nils Erik, with the upcoming season. Yes, good thank luck. You. Goodbye.